Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Jesus' words at the Last Supper with his disciples, those apostles who are the closest friends of his throughout his entire public ministry, begin to become deeply distressed. When Jesus reveals that one of them will betray him, all of them have a similar response. They all begin to question, well, is it me, Lord? Now, of course, we know that Judas is the one who would betray Christ. Yet none of the apostles had the confidence to be able to say definitively that they would not betray him. And this is something really important for us to recognize, that in the face of truth, when we're met with this difficult decision of following the will of God, that all of us are not only capable of betraying Christ, but we do it with regularity. And we do this by way of sin. Now, it's interesting that Jesus describes his betrayal at the Last Supper. This is where he is revealing the, the ministry and the mission with which he has come to fulfill, saving us by way of his passion, death, and resurrection, but also in a way to reveal that even among the closest of his friends, that there were those who would deny him. Now, there's a key distinction between Judas and the rest of the apostles. There's an argument to be made that all of them betrayed Christ in a variety of different ways. And the same is true for us. We betray Christ still when we choose to allow fear to, to consume us, when we allow the faith that has been given to us and passed down from generations to be something that is put aside and that we try to grasp onto things that we will not be saved by. Some of the most ironic of things are material goods, people hoarding things that they think, well, maybe this will get me a little bit further along. There are a few things that are certain for all of us that just as certain as we have been given life by the grace of God, death will come to all of us. In addition, we will find ourselves in a position of having betrayed Christ through lack of fidelity to him and his commands. The key distinction for us, brothers and sisters, is to remember that, the, that Judas instead of repenting, instead of begging for mercy, for forgiveness from a God who saves, he chose to despair. The rest of the apostles all betrayed Christ. They ran and fled when Christ was handed over. But they all begged for mercy. They all got up again. They all chose to place their trust their faith, their hope in Christ, the Christ who saves. And we're met with the same kind of decision still. When the test comes, when you fall into the trap of betraying Christ and his commands, will you despair or will you get up and beg for mercy and start anew?